And earlier sources told ANA7 that the first big test for the ANC unity is likely to play out at the ANC's NEC. They say the ANC's national leadership has resolved that the KZN Provincial Executive Committee should be disbanded. The proposal says that they would be put to the ANC NEC. And sources say the KZN PEC status may revive factional divisions at the NEC meeting. They say the decision to disband the PEC may be seen as the winning faction pushing to take control over the party's KZN unit. Some say the NEC will be tested to find an amicable solution that is seen as neutral and favoring all parties. Zigalala supporters in the NEC are likely to fight the proposed PEC dissolution. In studio, we're joined by Oliver Dixon, social political analyst. Thanks so much for your time. A professor, Beri Hanyani, professor with the University of the Northwest, and a political analyst is on the phone line. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Dixon, and thanks so much for joining us. I mean, this is a matter that could have been resolved from the get-go if the party had uh, strong enough internal processes to deal with grievances and uh, disenchantment. Now it's again coming to the fore with the NEC. What is an amicable resolution that could uh, appease everyone? Impartiality was uh, the priority of the day before the, the, the conference. Uh, so I wouldn't say that uh, the party's internal processes and structures were necessarily weak at the time. It's just that too many people were part of the, the race towards uh, 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 Nazarek. And so impartiality was something that was, in, uh, was very questionable. Impartiality now is not as questionable as it was before the conference. So I think now there's, there's a better opportunity to sit down for uh, a, a political solution as, as, as the most amicable solution. I think importantly, uh, uh, um, you know, this is a true test of the incoming leadership to be able to sit down and, 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 and really speak to both sides, uh, specifically in KZN and specifically in Free State. Uh, and I think they're quite capable to do that because if you look at the current uh, top six uh, uh, that we have, it's one, it's the so-called 50-50 split, right? So any solution that comes out of there should uh, uh, in large part be seen as a neutral, impartial solution, which one uh, has the interest of the party at heart, but two uh, seems to, uh, aims to prevent uh, factional uh, uh, splinters breaking away from the party uh, and perhaps weakening the ANC. So the ANC's focus at the moment should be to, to one, uh, uh, you know, give a solution to, to factional battles without creating splinters breaking away from the party, but one, uh, uh, keeping integrity at the core of it, because the, new, the, the test for this new leadership coming in is, 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 how, how, is integrity. Two, it's, it's interest in the party and not just its interest in, in pursuing its factional battles that they may have established before uh, mm. the elective conference. I mean, uh, Professor Hanya, are the divisions so deeply rooted that even the silver bullet that is uh, the unity and renewal is not able to remedy the factions that we're seeing? As Oliver is saying, that impartiality at this point uh, is not even an option because the factions would then suggest that there are differing views, almost differing um, ideologies and differing uh, preferred candidates in leadership. Good evening to you, Cindy. Good evening to your viewers. Good evening to Mr. Dixon there. Look, I, I think more than the issue or the principle of impartiality as the objective to go for here will no doubt be the issue of finding each other and ensuring that going forward, uh, the, the, the old age rhetoric, if I may use that pun carefully, of the so-called unity does find substance, it does find some structure. And this will take time. Uh, we wait to see whether indeed Ramaphosa is bringing some sense of fresh leadership into the new NEC. Uh, one would anticipate that prior to any attempt at addressing existing challenges that might be there. It may very well be the somewhat call that is made publicly to deal with the issue of the two centers of power. It might necessarily be the issue of dealing with corruption within the ranks of the party itself before dealing with corruption in government and other challenges. My take is that uh, they want to find each other, that they need to create the much needed consensus that will then begin to shape the so-called new ANC leadership.
Mm. But we even saw with the elective conference that with the Senzo Mkuno supporters uh, erroneously thinking that he had uh, been nominated in the top six or, or rather had the majority vote uh, against uh, uh, Ace Mahashule. And of course, that, that turned out to be rather embarrassing. And with the dissolution or rather that being on the agenda possibly of dissolving the case at NPEC, don't you think that the Zigalala faction, of course, would also be pushing back to retain him as head of uh, the province? Um, I think, you know, it, it seems to me uh, at this stage, and this is highly speculative at this stage, uh, that there, there, there may have been very strong talks between uh, the winning faction, so to speak, uh, that being the Cyril Ramaphosa faction, urging the, 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 uh, the Senzo faction not to pursue uh, uh, legal charges, but also not to, uh, you know, uh, allow that uh, the people within that camp to, 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 to continue to sow divisions. Look, it's clear, KZN really does feel a little bit disgruntled given that they don't have a representative in the top six, and that's something very new to KZN. Uh, so so their, their, their biggest concern is national representation Representation without an, without a representative in the in the top six, are we still going to be part of the national discussion when it comes to politics? Are the interests of KZN as a province still going to be part of it? If you look at something, if you look at what KZN has been able to do in the last four years, uh, uh, the the. You know, the economy established on the N3 uh, uh, gateway uh, um, uh, economy, which is something Jacob Zuma spent a lot of attention on, they, they may be in fear if that's something that will continue quite strongly and a, a, a top six that has no KZN representative. So the faction really is concerned about that. So there may be pushback in terms of, uh, uh, you know, Senzo's, uh, Senzo's camp being able to say, given that we have no represent uh, representation, we may continue with that. However, but a political decision will be one that says, uh, uh, where's, the, where's the right level of compromise? Where's the most? Uh, 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 where's the line of feasibility between you know, on, in compromising? One, uh, we can't want we can't want to pursue an, uh, uh, an instance where the top six will be uh, dissolved or the NEC be dissolved because one that's going to cause uh, the ANC losing a bigger part of its electorate come 2019 because it will be embroiled in, in legal battles that it doesn't need at the time going into 2019. They're going to lose that eight percent if they continue on that part. Mm. Um, but the second, the second question then is, uh, if, if that's not the line of compromise, where's the line of compromise? The line of compromise would be to give the people of KZN the PEC that they specifically want. So that may even have into discussions, uh, 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 the, secret the Secretariat office may even want to consider a rerun uh, in, in, in KZN uh, uh, to, to give the people of KZN the sort of uh, uh, PEC that, 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 they, that they want and feel politically fit for them. Mm. Uh, but Professor Hanya, you think going forward, maybe the review of the electoral processes of the ANC is something that they need to look at so that it, it moves away from the personality-driven uh, kind of uh, e e elections as opposed to you know policy or the integrity or the characteristics of a particular individual no no absolutely I mean it's one but one of the many issues I suppose that the ANC must start dealing with the, the, the right word to use here is whether the ANC will succeed in modernizing uh, itself as a party for instance Going forward, will they be able to incorporate technology in the way they make certain political decisions? We've seen the, the, the somewhat embarrassment that came from the Nazareth conference. Uh, you spoke about it in passing, the Zigalala, uh, no, sorry, not the Zigalala, the, the Mkuno Mahashule case, where there were allegations that certain votes were not included when they were supposed to have been included in the first instance. So had, had the ANC chose to use technology then, that embarrassment would not have been incurred in one, way, in one form or the, or the other. But, but, but to answer your question directly, I think the issue of self-introspection needs to be given substance, needs to be given meaning once and for all. And that meaning can only come as soon as the new working committee is established that will then begin to pursue the modernization agenda, which hopefully will begin then to give a new identity for the ANC. Mm. And what is at play, even if there are differences, as you're saying, that ultimately there, there needs to be an overarching uh, glue or that which keeps the party together beyond personal differences and ideologies. What do you think, uh, Professor, is, is at the root of it all, if it's not political careerism in that people want to advance their own uh, 
progress and, and prosperity within the party? I have a feeling that the new leadership will have to revisit the old values of selfless commitment, uh, putting the people first. We've had some of these drives and values being pushed uh, by the new leadership, especially last week's visit to the Eastern Cape. Whether this will be a success or not remains to be seen. But the new leadership needs to adopt this new, fresh approach in saying these are the old ANC values that, albeit, need to be applied in a modern era because the situation demands of the ANC to rise to the occasion, make sure that there are men and women who are capable to, to in a sense, promote the image and the brand called the ANC, and, of course, to stand up and deliver on behalf of those that it serves. All right, we're going to have to let you go. Professor Barry Hanyani, a political analyst and a professor with the University of the Northwest. Thanks for your time. We'll wrap it up in studio. Uh, Oliver, whether, I mean, the court cases, by the way, are still in progress. There's an appeal on the one side. And whether the, the ANC going forward can afford to essentially being dictated, as we see being played out in government, that uh, the courts are almost running a parallel uh, governance uh, on the party as well can they afford going forward look i do think there's 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 uh, you know outstanding instances where the court uh, may have passed on rulings that that seems like a, a, a judicial overreach uh, that undermines the separation of powers specifically between uh, the the organs of uh, the organs of uh, three arms of state but specifically between uh, uh, state and party but I think importantly here, uh, what these cases, what these particular cases put in front of the court are issues of, of, of administration uh, and not particularly issues of, 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 sub of substance. And I think uh, courts, uh, the court here is going to make a judgment based on whether administrative procedures have been followed correctly. And if that's not the case, the court should then rec recommend how to, 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 to rectify that. Uh, you know, the, the, court is, the court's role in this instance is corrective measures. Uh, so I do think uh, it, the, the importance of this is that any, out, any ruling that comes from the court should not be, uh, uh, you know, uh, outright be just painted as, as, as though it's, a, it's an overreach because people need to be able to, to understand what is being adjudicated in this instance. And I think an administrative process is being mm. adjudicated in this instance. And I think it's important that we don't just uh, uh, blindly uh, call the court uh, an, you know, a, a, a third force or call the court's uh, uh, instruments and institutions of overreach to undermine our democracy because then I think we're running the, a dangerous line of undermining the court and undermining the significance and importance of what a court ruling is to political processes. Yeah, is this the truest test though, of the new NEC? Uh, and of course after the two-day Lakhota we'll find out uh, what was on the agenda. We know that there had been differing views on the fate of uh, President uh, Jacob Zuma, now that is out of uh, the leadership in the party, uh, some saying that perhaps a recall, or this is what we are told, uh, and the, the NEC saying there is no such a discussion. Yeah, mm. right. Esma Rashula told us that there's no such discussion, so we shouldn't uh, expect or anticipate a recall of Jacob Zuma anytime soon. So I don't think this is a truest test. I think the truest test will come post-February, when Parliament is open and, and the oppositions raise a vote of no confidence, or at least uh, raise, uh, uh, you know, a, a uh, if, if, if Section 89 uh, has been concluded by, uh, by Parliament, we may see a, 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 an impeachment uh, vote come, come about again. So if that's the case, that's going to be the true uh, uh, test for Parliament. And remember, the Speaker now has the discretion of applying a secret ballot uh, means of voting and, say, and assuming that that is applied, that's going to be the true test. Uh, will people be able to reflect at the ballot box of Parliament what they reflect in their NEC meetings or what they reflect in their caucus meetings uh, uh, when, before they sit for such a vote? I think that's going to be the true test because I think that's the, where, where Jacob Zuma's biggest danger lies. Remember, he had lost some support in his own caucus. Only 80% of his caucus supported him in the last vote of no confidence. Right? If that number drops below 75%, Jacob Zuma's gone because if it drops below 75%, it means more than half of Parliament uh, has lost confidence in Jacob Zuma, then you have a real problem. So uh, I think that's where the real true test lies. Okay, of course, uh, it's early days. Uh, we'll discuss and ventilate these issues more specifically. We have Oliver Dixon here as a social political analyst joining us in studio. Much appreciated.